In this video, what I'm hoping to do is pro uh, provide some graphic proof of that answers the question, what in behavior can we expect from polynomials? What would really help, I think, you to understand this best is if you stop the video long enough to copy the notes below and then, of course, hit play, hit play again. Right, okay, so moving on. Hopefully you've stopped, you've written down all your stuff. What I want to get to is this. This is, let our polynomial be described as this whole mess right here. What I want to say to you is this. The only thing we're really going to be concerned about for what for this in behavior thing is this a value right here and this n value right up here. So this a right here, that one right there, and this n right here is this a right here and this n right here. So if we look at all these n behaviors, I could bore you to death and read you this whole thing, but it won't be hel as helpful, I don't think, as actually graphing this. So let's actually graph a couple and see what happens. So let's follow these uh, four rules and see what we get. So what I'm going to do is I'm on my CAS calculator. I'm going to go to, in your case, the home screen. I'm going to choose graphs, and then I'm going to start putting some of these values in. And here I'm just going to put in this text just to remind you what we're doing here. The first rule said a is less than 0 and n is even. So let's see what that might look like. Let's put in a couple functions that, that represent that. For example, maybe 2x squared, 2x squared. It doesn't matter what's on the other side of that 2x squared. So if you wanted to, you could put in some other value. I don't know, plus 3x or just plus 3 or whatever you wanted to. And hit enter. And here's that function, and we're looking at n behavior here. So n behavior, the first n behavior says, well, what happens as x approaches positive infinity? So we look this way towards the right, as far as we can look, as far as we can look, following that cursor right there, as far as we can look, off the screen, keep going right, keep going right, keep going right. And then I think what you would find is if, if you could follow this curve up as you go towards positive infinity, the curve keeps getting taller and taller and taller. So as x approaches positive infinity, the height, f of x, also approaches positive infinity. And the opposite is also true. So we're going to do the opposite here. We're going to approach negative infinity. So we're going to the left as far as we can, as far as we can, as far as we can, across the calculator, off the side of the screen, keep going, keep going, keep going, out past your car. And if we had done that and we look up, we'd find that our function continues to increase. So in this case, if a is greater than 0 and n is even, it looks like as x approaches positive infinity, so does f of x. And as x approaches negative infinity, so does f of x. But let's try another function that fits that rule. And let's try, I don't know, something like maybe 4 to the, I'm sorry, x to the 4th power. Again, the value of a is positive because there's 1x. n is even because 4 is an even number. Hit enter. And it looks like this. And I can see this behavior in the middle, but that's not what we're looking at. We're only looking at end behaviors. And it seems to be the same behavior that as we go to the right as far as possible, the function seems to be increasing, doesn't it? And as we go as far left as possible, if we could follow this, believe it or not, if we could follow this somewhere way, way, way over here, we'd pick up this green curve again, and it'd be way up here. So again, as f of x approaches negative infinity, the, I'm sorry, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x also approaches positive infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, f of x also approaches positive infinity. We may just try one more really quickly, because it is that easy, I think. And we'll use x to the sixth power. I don't know if you can tell the differences or not, but they are different functions. There's stuff going on here in the middle, but that's not what we're arguing about. We're arguing only about in behavior. So let's move on to the next rule. I'm going to add another graph. And this one is if a is greater than 0. So let's put that piece of text in. Here we have a is greater than 0, again, greater than 0, and hello, and n is, uh, just to give an idea what we're doing here, we'll see if we can find some functions that fit that. Uh, function here, we have uh, a has a positive number, so we'll make it 1, so there's x, well, that's 1x, isn't it? And we'll put it to an odd power, to the third power, certainly odd. And there it is. And if we follow this, as we go, x goes towards negative infinity, 
we see that this function, the height also is going down as we move to the left, so it's approaching negative infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, that's as we move to the right, move to the right, f of x approaches po positive infinity. So as, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. So that's rule two. Hopefully you're looking back at the notes that you took and seeing if these graphs are matching up with what you expected to happen. Let's try another one. Uh, we have, again, x is greater than zero, like two is greater than zero. So 2x has to be an odd exponent, so let's put it to the fifth power, if you don't mind, and hit enter. And we have this function. The function looks a little bit similar to the cubic function. There are some differences, and we can certainly talk about those later, but all we care about in this case is end behavior. And as we move left, that is x goes to negative infinity, f of x, the height, seems to be crashing down towards negative infinity. And as x moves to positive infinity, the height seems to be increasing. So we have that x goes to positive infinity, f of x goes to positive infinity, x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes to negative infinity. Check that against your rule number two. Let's try another one, please. All right, so I'm going to go to insert again, I'm going to hit graphs, and now it says that we want this rule, and we want a to be less than zero, and n is even. So let's see if we can find some cases where that's true. Like, I don't know, the opposite of x squared. So we had the x squared, and it went up. On, as we went towards the extremes on the left and the right. And then look at this one, exactly opposite. As we go towards, as x goes to negative infinity, the height goes to negative infinity. As, the, as x goes to positive infinity, the height again goes to negative infinity. Let's try another one, see if, how that's working. I don't know, how about uh, negative three is less than zero x and we need an even so how about a fourth so to the fourth power so we're looking here negative three is a it's less than zero four is the exponent that's in and it's even let's see what that looks like and it looks like this not totally dissimilar to the other function but we're not arguing about this behavior that happens in the middle all i'm saying is that as we move to the left the function seems to head down towards negative infinity and as we head to the right that is as we approach as x approaches positive infinity the height, f of x, seems to go to negative infinity, doesn't it? So I think that's good proof. Let's try to prove out one more rule. I think there's time. So let's insert graphs. Uh, hopefully you're checking as, as you're looking at these, you're pausing the video, and you're looking, you're asking yourself, as you look at rule one, is it coordinating with the graph? And if it's not, what questions do you have? So we can talk about that. Let's do the last one. And again, it is a is less than, oh, sorry. A is greater than zero, and n and n is odd. 